Ever since I started making post-processing videos, I had the idea to edit one of my images blindfolded. Today is the day I put this plan into action. First, I had to set some rules. As I need to see the sliders, I can just turn off the screen. So I simply cover the image with cardboard. Additionally, I covered the histogram with cardboard since this would be too helpful otherwise. Finally, I collapsed the thumbnails preview below to have no chance of seeing any preview of the image whatsoever. Because this is a panoramic image, I already applied some cropping as it would be impossible without seeing the picture. Also, to not make it too hard, a rough scribble of the image and the histogram are allowed. Okay, here we are in Lightroom and it's already harder than expected. So I know this image was close to sunset, so I do have some more vibrant colors in mind. Usually I start that by changing the profile from Adobe Color to Adobe Landscape. This should boost the base saturation. I'm not sure what it is doing with the brightness, however. But because I have my awesome histogram scribble right there in the top right corner, I can almost certainly say the image is too dark. So let's bring up the exposure. Not sure how high I can go, but I want to keep it low. I also want to bring up the shadows because I remember it was super dark in those darker areas. Let's raise it quite a bit actually. And I know there was a bit of underexposure, but I don't think it was that important to the image. So I'm not going to touch the blacks. Oh, I totally forgot the white balance. So as I said, this was close to sunset. Let's try to pump up the temperature, just giving this image some more warmth. This feels so weird. I think I'm already too high. Let's bring it down a bit, just like that. Okay. Now this is a mountainscape image, so what I usually do on those is to bring up the clarity. I'm also going to add some texture, giving this shot some more sharpness. In this case I'm not touching the dehaze because that's way too dangerous when not seeing the image. But I'm going to apply some vibrance to bring up the saturation some more. Okay, now I guess comes the really fun part with the masking adjustments. Let's check that out. I mean, I could simply go with a sky selection and hope Lightroom is doing a great job at selecting it. So I think it's done calculating the sky mask. So on the sky, let's pump up the clarity. And I'm also going to pump up the saturation. I think I might need to pump up the contrast as well and maybe bring down the highlights because I have the feeling there's some overexposure going on. Now due to the cardboard I do have a problem. I can't target the masking menu. Let me drag it down here. Okay, much better. Let's create a new mask and I'm going with a linear gradient and oh god. I try to basically target the top part of the sky. Let's make it really soft so I'm stretching this gradient, otherwise it might be too strong. And again, I'm just bringing down the exposure. And actually, I might bring down the shadows to just target the darker parts up here. Okay. Then I guess... I don't remember any light on the right side, but I might want to try to add some glow effect. I think there was a bit of light. I'm not sure. Let's try it. I'm going to use a radial gradient. Uh, again, it's super hard to create this one without seeing the image. So I guess the edge of the image is somewhere around here. Let's place it here. I hope this video is worth uploading it because it's so much trouble getting through it. So to add the glow effect, I'm going to increase the blacks as I usually do. Let's not go too crazy. I'm also going to drop the dehaze. Dehaze, where are you? There. So dropping it will make this area brighter and add some glow to it as well. And I do want to add temperature to make this area warmer, to kind of simulate the late sunset light coming in. Just like that. Maybe this filter is a little too small. I do think I need to rotate it though. Alright, and then we have the foreground. There was some kind of reflection going on, so let's just use a linear gradient. And I'm trying to target the reflection in the foreground. And I want to bring it out by bringing up the clarity and the texture and the whites. That usually works quite well. Hmm. And I think 
That should be it for the local adjustments. I think that's it, yes. So after the local adjustments, let's do the color grading. I'm not sure if I can do anything in the HSL panel, but I have in mind that there are some blue and, and yellow color tones going on. So maybe the blue colors do have some purple color cast in the sky. To fix that, I'm in the hue panel and I'm bringing down the purple hue very slightly. I also want to make the yellow golden light a little more orange. So let's bring down the yellow hue. All right, then in the saturation tab, I am bringing down the yellow saturation, I think. And let's see, I want to raise the blue saturation. And at the same time in the luminance tab, I want to bring down the blue luminance. And let's raise the yellow luminance, which should make the highlights a little brighter. Okay, finally, split toning. For the highlights, since we have a sunset shot, I'm using a warm color tone. Somewhere in the yellow range. Let's pop up the saturation. Uh, I do remember there not being that much highlights. So I'm not sure if I should push it that much. Let's try it with the midtones as well. Let's just go with something like this. And for the shadows, I'm going with a blue color tone like I usually do. Whoa, way too much saturation. That should be fine. I am so afraid right now of looking at the image later. Okay, enough of the split toning. Let's go into the calibration tab and just bring down the blue primary hue. You can never go wrong with that, right? Also pushing the saturation here. Okay, finally we can do the sharpening, which is super super easy. Since I'm always applying the same settings, I'm dropping the radius, increase the details, add some masking. At least I do have a preview window here. And add some sharpening. And at this point, the image should be done. So I guess let's check it out. First, let's take away the histogram cardboard. I mean, it doesn't look too bad. We do have a lot more underexposure though. Let's lift the final cardboard. Huh. That actually isn't bad at all. I would have expected something way worse. In the end, this actually might not be as funny as I expected, because this looks pretty decent to me. I mean, I even got the masks, right? That was unexpected. Well, anyway, let me create a virtual copy of this image and edit it the proper way, so we can compare the difference between the two versions. Okay then, let's go at it once more. While editing this blind, I totally forgot this is a panoramic image. And you can actually see some distortion going on in the mountains in the back because it looks kind of unnatural. That's the very first thing I want to fix. And for that, I'm going into the lens corrections tab. Here under the manual panel, I'm just going to pump up the distortion. And this will just add some more landscape around the mountains and just bring them into a more natural state. So I'm going to pump it up quite a bit. I'm going to get some gaps towards the edges of the image, which I'm going to fix later with Photoshop, I guess. But this way the image looks much, much better already. Then in the basic tab, I do want to change the profile from Adobe Color to Adobe Landscape, because as I said, this will give the image some more base saturation and I think this looks quite nice. Then the white balance. I do need to increase the temperature to give this image this warm look. I do actually need to push it quite a bit more than I did in the blind edit. But at the same time, I need to adjust the tint because right now you can see a very, very clear magenta color cast. And to fix that, I'm going to bring down the tint. And thus, we're just getting more of a golden hour look. Just like that. Now for the exposure. I did have a basic idea due to my awesome scribble of the histogram. This did point me in the right direction. So again, I'm just bringing up the exposure to add some overall brightness and just get some details back in the shadows. You can see looking at this program, there's no overexposure at the moment, so that's great. For that reason, I can safely bring up the highlights. Let's raise them quite a bit. And at the same time, instead of raising the shadows, I'm going to drop the shadows to add some more contrast. I can lower them quite a bit 
and still I'm not having any more underexposure than before. Now I'm going to push the whites some more and I'm not touching the blacks. This is looking quite good. I love the colors. Uh, I do think next I'm going to add some texture, which is just for some sharpness and the clarity, just like in the blind edit, because that works great on those mountain landscapes. We could play around with the vibrance, but I think I actually don't have to at this point. Maybe later though. Then for the masking. This has surprised me the most with the blind edit, since I almost got all the masks right. However, if I'm choosing sky for this image, you will quickly notice Lightroom is having a hard time selecting the sky. So instead of using this one, I am going to use one of Lightroom's new AI masks, which is the background mask. You can see this clearly detects the sky and separates it from the mountains, but we do have the foreground selected as well, so that's not a big deal. I'm going to subtract the near gradient and just subtract this from the mask this way. With our sky selection, I am going to bring down the highlights just to get some more details in the clouds. I'm also going to bring down the shadows for some more contrast and add some clarity just a little bit. And at this point, I need to work on the colors. I do want to make the sky a little warmer, so let's bring up the temperature. At the same time, I do want to drop the tint quite massively this will help making the sky a bit warmer as well. And then I'm going to drop the saturation since the colors do look a bit weird this way. All right, that looks great. Then let's work on the reflection. Therefore, I am going to create a linear gradient and just like before, I'm targeting the reflection in the foreground like that. Here, I do want to bring up the exposure. Not that much, that's a lot better. And I'm also going to add texture and clarity. And that's already enough. The glow effect, which I added in the blind edit, did not work in this case. I have tried it in a few different versions, but in the end, there's just not enough light coming in from the right side. So I'm not going to add any glow effect in here. This means we can head into the color grading stuff. I'm starting in the HSL panel as before. And here I actually got the hue pretty much completely right because we do have a very subtle purple color cast in the sky. So I'm going to drop the purple hue and I'm also going to drop the yellow hue, which will give the highlights some more of an orange color tone, which looks really, really good in my opinion. Then in the saturation tab, instead of pushing the blue saturation, I am going to drop it. And I'm also going to drop the yellow saturation quite a lot. All right, that looks great in my opinion. For the luminance tab, I'm going to push the yellow luminance just a little bit to make those highlights brighter. And I'm going to drop the blue luminance to make the sky a little darker. And that's it for the HSL panel. For the split toning, I'm mainly going to touch the highlights and the midtones. For the highlights, I do want to have a warm color tone. So let's go with something like this. And I'm bringing up the saturation quite a lot. For the mid-tones, I'm not going to add a warm color tone. Instead, I'm using a cold color tone and this will help to preserve some more of a natural look. So let's bring up the saturation. All right, great. Finally, in the calibration tab, I'm doing the exact same thing as before. I'm bringing down the blue primary hue and I'm pushing the saturation. All right, and finally, of course, the sharpening. Bring the radius down, increase the details, add some masking, and then increase the amount of sharpening. And here we have the finished Lightroom edit. Now, of course, we need to fix those borders. So for that step, I'm just switching over to Photoshop real quick. And to fill those gaps first, I'm grabbing the lasso tool and just make rough selections. Then I'm hitting Shift F5 and under contents, I'm going with content aware, then just hit OK. Photoshop will then automatically fill those gaps, so that's not a big deal. And thus I'm just working my way through the image with lots of separate selections. At this point I might want to crop the image. Not sure if you need that much around those mountains. I want to take away some parts of the left and right. 
foreground isn't that interesting to me, but I think that looks pretty nice. Finally, we could maybe add a little more brightness and contrast, so I'm just going to add a levels adjustment layer, bring down the point for the highlights, raise the points for the blacks, maybe very slightly. Perfect. Now I could go further on by dodging and burning some things. I might as well include it in this video at this point. So let's go ahead and create a new layer, switch the blending mode to overlay. And for the dodging and burning stuff, as usual, I'm going to use the TK panel plugin. First, let's see if we can target some nice highlights in here. That looks pretty good. Let's apply it as a layer mask on our new layer. And I'm grabbing the brush tool, set the foreground color to white. Make sure the brush opacity is a little bit lower to not overdo that. And then I'm just going brush in some more brightness in a few spots. Okay, let's see if we can target some mid-tones. Let's try it like this. I'm just going to brighten up the mountains a bit. Perfect. And I guess that is finally it for editing this image. So here we have the blind edit version and here we have the final version. I did expect some very strange outcome, however, I was quite disappointed. Still, I would not upload the blind edit version anywhere. The magenta color cast is way too strong and the overall image is quite too dark in my opinion. With the correctly edited version, I just have a much nicer image thanks to the fixed lens distortion and the more natural looking color tones. So I hope you did enjoy this video, it was something different for once. If you have any questions left, feel free to ask in the comments and thank you very much for watching this video.